What's up everybody? Well today I'm going to show you how to work on an early elite motor. What I have right here is pretty much one of the first versions of the early Hoover Elite. This here is a Hoover Elite 350 and you're probably thinking what makes this an early model? Well, for starters, let me show you. First thing to tell how early of a machine this is, is the cutout in the base, which this was done for fan chamber clearance, but they would later mold this up in later versions, and the serial number on this, 0588, which means this has an early motor design similar to that of a Hoover Concept 1 that they grafted onto the, to these machines. And you will definitely notice that when you turn this machine on. And I will go ahead and show you that right now. But this thing is pretty loud. So as you can hear, this thing runs very loud, and most of that is bearing noise. So I'm going to tear this down and look at the motor, and we'll show you how to work on one of these. So I'm pretty sure a lot of you probably know how to tear down one of these vacuums, at least for those of you who watched my earlier videos on how I tore apart an elite motor to fully rebuild it. So disassembly of that one is more or less the same. But as you will notice, this has a little bit different motor casing design. And there's a big indentation right there in the motor casing plastic, which allows for easier disassembly without having to remove the headlight bulb. And I will go ahead and show you that. All right, now once you slid the motor casing off, there is one thing I would like to point out, is that the end of the shaft is a little bit different than those with the ball bearing. <clears throat> that is because deep down in here, there is actually a needle bearing. And as you can see, this was already somewhat greased by the previous owner, and it's still making some noise. And I'm fully aware that I'm probably not going to get this thing perfect, but I'm going to try to get it working as best as I can so it doesn't make as much bearing noise but since this is a needle bearing you are gonna have to put up with a bit of bearing noise out of this but I'm gonna see what I can do all right if you want to know how much applications of grease I'm putting in this bearing here you go and I'm also distributing the grease while I'm packing it in with small little flat tip screwdriver rotating the bearing ever so slightly just to give it some more grease to make sure enough of it gets distributed so that it hopefully with any luck shouldn't make as much noise and forgive me but it's very hard to do this on camera but 
You will also notice there is a bit of grease at the end of the shaft here. That's because I was taking it off, trying to distribute the grease through the, through the bearing as much as I could. So I'll update you once everything's all put back together to my liking. If you're getting ambiguous like I am, you can take the motor fully apart down to this. I already have the carbon brushes unseated. I have my Elite Teardown video on how you can do that. The process is exactly the same. I have already taken off the aluminum tape for the fan chamber that seals it up. So that will have to be resealed once you put it back together. But then the rest you could do is just unscrew the fan, left hand threaded, and then everything should just pop right out. So you can get access to the the inner bearing by the fan, and I'm gonna go to the extra lengths and grease that up, which that is still a ball bearing. That's one thing that hasn't changed about these elites since their design changes over the years. So let's go ahead and do that. Good thing I decided to go the extra mile and grease even the inner ball bearing because the grease in this is almost nearly dried up. I say almost, there's still a little bit of bit of it there, but it's very minimal, so good thing I'm going the extra mile. So I'll go ahead and repack this. All right, everything's all greased up and the little rubber cap on the bearing is put back on. I should note that this is a size 608 bearing, the same size bearing Hoover has used in all of their Elite motors, even after the ball bearing revision in later years. So that is one nice thing. I, If I'm not mistaken, I think even the Concept motors used a 608 ball bearing on their fan side. So that's one nice thing. Any 608 bearing will work for this. And if yours has the rubber end caps like this, which more likely than not it should, then you can repack and re-grease them. So one nice thing, I'm gonna clean up the excess, then we will put everything back together. All right, fans back in. Before I put back in the carbon brushes, I wanna make sure everything's spinning nice, and it is. So we will go ahead and reassemble those guys, and then I will go ahead and off camera seal up the fan chamber. All right, everything's back in. At least as good as I'm gonna get it for now. Everything. Sorry if I'm not showing you this on camera, but. It's all spinning really nice there. So, before I reinstall this, I will go ahead and do a final pack of grease just for safe measures. And all I know is if there's any further trouble, then that bearing may have failed and I need to get a new one. If I'm not mistaken, I do believe the bearing size for this is J65 because I know that's a similar size bearing that the Hoover Concept 1s use. But anyway, I'll go ahead and do a final repack, then we'll do a reassembly and test run. So she's been complaining this whole time, and had the nerd to bring up one of her favorite cat toys. But anyway, yeah, I know, I'll play with you in a minute. Just let me finish this up, then I'll get to you. All right, final repacking. Everything looks about as good as I can get. Now, time for reassembly. I almost forgot to mention, before you seal up the fan chamber and everything, or at least before you put the casing back on, you have to seal the fan chamber up on these early Elite motors because they weren't held together by a rubber seal at the top. You actually had to seal the outside of the fan chamber similar to how a Concept 1 would. 
Now, unfortunately, since I didn't have any aluminum tape, I just used some cheap Walmart duct tape and it works pretty good. And I even did some towards the top where it connects into the body. So <clears throat> now that all that's done, let's go ahead and slide the motor casing on. All right, once it's all in this state, it's pretty much ready to go back into the vacuum. So we will go ahead and just put the dust seal on, the base over, and we just slide it down in. I mean, make sure the dust seal slides down in without issue. I will go ahead and align this off camera. There we go. So, we'll again put the motor retaining clips on. Tighten up the screws. All right, everything's all reassembled. So, let's go ahead and give it its first official test run after the motor rebuild and re-grease. Now, I'm not expecting a major improvement, if anything, because this is still a needle bearing and it was still making a bit of noise while I was turning everything by hand, so I'm not expecting a major improvement, so here we go. Little bit, but not much. Fantastic, but then again, you are going to get some bearing noise out of a needle bearing. Maybe I'll have to do a part two with a new needle bearing, or if worse comes to worse, to fully get rid of the bearing noise, I may have to convert this to a ball bearing, but... Then again, this was a main reason why Hoover later updated the motor design in late 88 to give it a ball bearing and not make as much noise because Hoover eventually took note that the concept motor design doesn't work in the Elite because there's not too much shielding around the motor to fully stop the bearing noise from happening. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video on how to take apart an early Hoover Elite motor. Be sure and stay tuned, and don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.